What a beautiful sky. Amazing. I just want to fix the setting for the reading on the other phone. Bear with me a second. Have a beautiful sky this morning overlooking Jerusalem. We're in a very special place. You can probably figure out where we are by now. We've never done a live stream from up here before. And it's over four and a half years that we are blessed to do this. So this is all part of East Jerusalem. We are up on top of the Mount of Olives. And there we have the temple in Jerusalem and we're actually right across from Notre Dame, but we'll do that detail in a moment. It's a spectacular view of the old city <clears throat> from high up. And this little hill here in front of us, that no longer seen like a hill, but if you were on the other side, you'd see it's a hill right here. We've never seen it from this angle. And this is where Solomon's wives did their worship of false gods. <clears throat> and so we have a very clear view of the mountains of Moab. The sun has just come over that level. And we see that all stretching all along on the east side of the Dead Sea, <clears throat> down to the Red Sea. So this is where we are. And it's interesting to see the sun rising, because words are spoken about the sun today, and about the moon setting. And there you have the moon over Jerusalem, this full moon. And here we have the Dome of the Rock. And then just to show you a few details of the city, we're way above the Kedron Valley, which is down here. You can see a chunk of it here of the side. Sometimes we walked along to that corner of the Temple Mount and did our filming from there. And then if we look across here, we have there on the very center of the screen now, Mount Zion. The Dormition Church is the dominant feature with uh, that minaret-like tower, bell tower. And then right there is the upper room and David's his kenotaph, his empty tomb because that crusader building is the memory of David in Mount Zion. Those connections, Mount Zion originally was the Temple Mount itself where the temple was, where God resided. And then David was buried here on this side of Jerusalem in the eastern hill it said and we are east the same side where the sun rises so because I'm very far away from home we have to find Notre Dame that's not too difficult you have this whole cluster rising there in Jerusalem and you can even hear the bells at least I hear them so you have that tower of of uh, St. Saviour's Church, towering high. And then you have the City Hall, but you also have uh, Notre Dame. You can see the towers there. I put them in the very center of the screen. In the perspective, they're underneath the center of the cranes. And then you see that yellowish light on top of the trees there. That's the rooftop restaurant. So now you see where we are right across the city. You know, I never knew there were so many graves in this graveyard. I walked up through the graveyard and it was a little tricky finding my way out because a lot of these walls, but then there was an occasional stairs and the possibility of coming out. So <clears throat> these are all uh, Jewish graves and they actually they wrap around this hill all around to Bethany. So when you're at, well, Bethphage, let's say, when you're at Bethphage where Jesus gets up on the donkey, you can see see that uh, that reality 
I think the most efficient way for me to go out will be to go <clears throat> along here. On this road, it's a little bit longer, but it'll be surely get me where I want to go. It's a challenge in the in the cemetery with the different walls. And here we're able to view Jerusalem from a good a good position, a good perch. Oh, there now you can see something else very interesting from this angle. Maybe I'll just wait a second to find it out. We see where the Gehenna Valley is coming in to the Kidron Valley. There's a house going to block us, but if we go up a little further up, maybe we can see it better. But you can definitely see the Gehenna Valley very well. Uh, so here we have where these trees are, and right behind them, that's the Kidron Valley, and it gets deeper and deeper. But then over here, and just beyond this mosque, which featured on the Instagram post last week, there you see the side, the bank of the south bank of the of the uh, Kidron Valley, and it runs in. Uh, sorry, the Gehenna Valley. That comes all the way around from just this side of the King David Hotel, which is right there now in the, in the center of the screen, and it actually starts further over. And then it comes all the way along that western side of the city and then down on the southern side of the city into the Kidron Valley here, which runs on the east side of the city. So there's a little bit for the geography of Jerusalem. And the sun now as it rises is going to hit the city more and more, but we're going to make it more difficult to see the sun because we have to deal with all these walls until the sun rises up much higher but we'll see it reflecting on the windows and eventually on the Golden Dome. So we're in the 33rd Sunday of the year and we finish up reading Mark's Gospel today. And we finish the liturgical year. Next Sunday will be the first, will be Christ the King, which is the, the total finale of the liturgical year, followed by a week of ordinary days, which means in two weeks we will have the beginning of Advent. So we'll have this challenge now, not seeing the sun, but that's okay. There you can see the Kidron Valley from down here, and it goes along all this side of the, of the old city, uh, further up there towards Hebrew University. You can also see Gethsemane from here, a different angle on it. There you have the southern side of the basilica, down the center of the screen, and then up here you have Mary Magdalene Church, and you have Dominus Flavit. We will get a better view of it in a moment here. Just go behind the railings. Good morning. It's a Balkhir. And here we have Dominus Flavit and the other towers on the top of Mount of Olives are not visible at this moment. So again, all the graveyards, the Christian graves down in the center of the Kidron Valley and the Muslim graves against the wall of the old city. So the sun and the moon failing according to today's reading. Before that, we can go back to, American? no, Irish, and I mean Ireland. Sabal Khair, Yom Hello. So if we went up this road here, we'd go up by the Seven Arches Hotel and up to the uh, place of the Ascension and the Our Father Church, but we're going to go here just to shave off a few minutes. <laughs> so I can get back on a reasonable time for community prayer, God willing. In fact, I did the German live stream on a Friday evening just from here. I can show you and then you can see the city. If you just look on the YouTube channel, it's only on the YouTube channel and it's uh, every Friday evening. And I did it from here. So you see the city, it's rather dark. It's 
not completely dark, but it's advanced twilight. And I did it from right in here. Also for the same reason, because it was a commentary on today's readings. So you can hear other commentaries about today's readings, uh, explaining all the, the, the apocalyptic terminology and imagery, especially imagery of the end of the world and the, the meaning of our lives in that light. It's a very important subject of our lives and anything we do is to know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what's the outcome we want. If we want a particular outcome, uh, then we need to do certain things to get that outcome. And in that sense, our life won't last forever as much as we'd like it to last in this life forever. It's going to be transformed. I'd like to offer you a couple of other keys. Uh, you know, the sun and the moon, they were created by God's word. And everything was created by God's word. Well, there we see the tip of the tower of the Our Father Church. Up there. And then from this perspective, we won't be able to see the Ascension Tower of the Russian Orthodox Sisters. <coughs> so we're coming down this very steep hill of Dominus Flavit, and we have the luxury of not having cars coming down on us, which makes it a little bit less enjoyable. So by God's word, the whole world was made. And so God, by his word, created the sun and the moon. And now the sun and the moon fail and all the stars. And so much fails in our life in a regular way, all the time. Just every year we see the leaves fall from a certain series of trees. Others are evergreens, which is an interesting thought as well, that that perpetuity, it's also part of human life. There's something that carries on in our life that's not finished. And those symbols in, in nature are very eloquent for us to speak to that. So here's the entrance to Dominus Flavit. And here you can see the writing is on the wall. Dominus Flavit. Where the Lord wept. That's the meaning of the word in, in uh, Latin. Dominus the Lord Flavit, he cried. So, and then the reading today says, even all of these things fail, but the word of God lasts forever. My word will not pass away. The creative word the word of God that creates the universe. My word will not pass away. It preceded the created universe and it will continue after the life of each of the creatures. I find it also interesting with this apocalyptic vision how modern science describes the demise of the stars. And so you have a dying star. It's a term in science. It's a technical scientific term. And a star, dying star eventually becomes a black hole that sucks in everything around it. An extraordinary force of attraction of gravity. Just a little glimpse here of the extent of this cemetery. This is just a fraction of it. By walking up through it today, I went up over there towards um, that hill of Solomon, 
before I went up to the cemetery and it's immense. It's like when you're climbing a mountain or mountain trekking and you think you've gotten to the top and then there's more levels above you and they're all replete with graves. And there's just a minimal space left free for getting through and some bigger arteries than when there's a crowd for a particular funeral to make it easier. But every inch is used well and intentionally. My word will not pass away. And God's word is a word of creation of us forever. And that's expressed in the psalm today very beautifully. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Here we're going to, you can just get a little glimpse of the top of Mary Magdalene Church, but I won't go down to get Gethsemane that way. I want to go down here straight. Also in interest for the, oh, there we have Dominus Flavic from this spot here. Many of you have been pilgrims and have looked out on Jerusalem from up there. This is called the Path of Kohanim, which means priests. So it's a stairway. And we'll be able to see a little bit more of the city, maybe. It depends if these walls don't block my view. Bishop Byrne today has a very interesting commentary on the significance of the sun and the stars and the moon, which I recommend you can hear, that there, all this is passing away, all the guiding lights of human activity. And that leads to a point I want to make for today's readings. We're not passing away. Our life here will come to an end, like sometimes it tragically does. And we don't know the time it will happen. We just received very sad news a couple of days ago, two days ago, that one of our former waitresses who got married then and once her baby was due, she finished working with us. And then she just had twins three months ago. So she has three children and she was driving and a driver apparently under the influence of some drugs or something crossed the road to pass a, uh, a vehicle that wasn't moving fast enough for him and he met her head on and sadly her life was lost and actually the three children survived but uh, two of them are, are critically ill the, the older boy Omar and uh, one of the twins so our life, we can't, it's not just when we're 90 or 95, we start thinking about the demise of our lives. It's a very fragile reality. But because God's word doesn't pass away, then, and we have the resurrection uh, from the dead. And that's the, that's the final stage of our life from this perspective and it's really why we were created to live forever and the resurrection wouldn't have been necessary but for sin and God instituted a plan of redemption and so we are blessed to enter into that plan of redemption that's our faith that's the path of faith and because of that faith we have hope We're endowed with hope. It's not just a world that ends with an accident, with a cancer. The world doesn't end with all these things. The world doesn't end with winter. There's springtime. In the springtime, our faith opens up allows us to be filled with hope. 
for an eternal springtime of resurrection and glory. And because of that, we can bear a lot of things, which is patience, which is love. And we can give of ourselves in service, which is love. And we can encourage people, which is a beautiful act of love and goodness. So a life of faith, hope and love is the way people live who have faith, who, have, who know this world isn't definitively finished. It will be renewed completely. When we live in the kingdom of this world, we live by what we can figure out with our wits. When we live in God's kingdom, present in this world, we live by faith, hope and love. We see each person as an image of God, made in his image and likeness. This is the Christian burial area here. And then we have the Muslim area across from us. We walked through there also this past week, up there alongside the wall. Sometimes we go through a Gethsemane in life but always calling out to Abba, Father. Take this cup of suffering away from me, but not my will, thy will be done. I think we'll just do our little selfie moment here to conclude because it's gone very long. Bless you. See you later, alligators. Have a blessed day. Living in the delight and the joy of faith, hope, and love forever.